Hello, and welcome to QuantPi. In this video, we are going to derive the formulae for the moments of the Brownian motion. We will start with the moment generating function, which is an alternative way to characterize a probability distribution and is very similar to the Laplace transform. We will quickly outline how the moment generating function enables the derivations of the moments. We will then apply the same procedure to compute the first four moments of the Brownian motion. We will then deduce a general formula for the kth moment. We will then outline an alternative method for deriving a recursive formula for the moments of the Brownian motion. This formula will enable us to enumerate the moments quickly, helping us to verify the general formula. Let's recall the formula for the moment generating function of a random variable z. This is normally written as function of t, but as t represents our time index, we will use theta instead. For students from analysis background, this is very much like the Laplace transform, but notice we don't have the minus sign in the exponent. Now to see how this simple transformation enables us to compute the moments, let's recall the expansion of the exponential of a variable x. Applying this to theta times z, we get. Using the linear property of the expectation, we get. Now this representation enables us to calculate any moment of the variable. Let's explain the procedure with the calculation of the first and second moments. To isolate the first moment, we differentiate both sides of the equation once. Now every term other than the first has got theta, so if we set theta equal to zero, then the first moment is isolated. Let's repeat the procedure for the second moment. We will need to differentiate it twice, or just differentiate the previous expression once more. Setting theta equal to zero, give us the second moment on the right hand side. Generally, to compute the kth moment, one differentiates the moment generating function k times and then set theta equal to zero, and this isolates the kth moment. Let's summarize the discussion so far. We started with the definition of the moment generating function. We then expanded the exponential, enabling us to establish the link between the derivatives of the moment generating function and the moments. Setting theta equal to zero in the first derivative gave us the formula for the first moment in terms of the derivative of the moment generating function. And setting theta equal to zero in the second derivative gave us the formula for the second moment. Generalizing, we can say that setting theta equal to zero in the kth derivative gives us the formula for the kth moment. Sounds easy, but how does one get the moment generating function? We know the Brownian motion is normally distributed, so we can just use the moment generating function of normal distribution. If y is normally distributed with some given mean and variance, then its moment generating function is the exponential of its mean plus half of the variance. We have derived this formula in the arithmetic Brownian motion video, so if you are interested in its derivation, then please watch the arithmetic Brownian motion video in this playlist. Now, our Brownian is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance t, so theta times Brownian is also normally distributed, but the variance gets multiplied by the square of theta. Hence, we can write the moment generating function of our Brownian as follows. Now, let's calculate the first four moments. Let's reproduce the moment generating function. Differentiating both sides with respect to theta, we get. Applying the chain rule and evaluating the derivative, we get. To isolate the first moment, we set theta equal to zero. Substituting the expression and then setting theta equal to zero, we see that the first moment is zero. Now, for the second moment, we will need to calculate the second derivative of the moment generating function which we calculate by differentiating the first derivative once more. Applying the product rule and evaluating the derivatives, we get. Factoring the exponential, we get a simpler expression. Now we just need to set theta equal to zero to isolate the second moment. Substituting the expression and then substituting zero for theta, we get the second moment of the Brownian motion. 
for the third moment, we first reproduce a second derivative of the moment generating function formula that we just derived. Differentiating the second derivative, once more, we get applying the product rule, evaluating the derivatives, factoring the exponential, and simplifying, we get. Now, we set theta equal to zero, to get the third moment. Substituting the expression, and then substituting zero for theta, we see the third moment is also zero. In fact, all the odd moments of the Brownian motion are zero. This is because the process is symmetric around zero, negative, and positive values are equally likely, and odd powers of these cancel each other, so the net result is zero. Finally, for the fourth moment, we differentiate a third derivative of the moment generating function formula that we just derived. Applying the product rule, evaluating the derivatives, factoring the exponential, and simplifying, we get. Now we set theta equal to zero to get the fourth moment. Substituting the expression, and then substituting zero for theta, we get the formula for the fourth moment. Let's summarize the four formulae that we derived. We can use these to deduce the general formula for an odd and an even moments. Let k represents the set of non-negative integers. A general odd moment can be represented as follows. As we mentioned before, all the odd moments are zero. The even moments can be represented as follows. Notice the double factorial. The double factorial of an even integer, say k, means that we multiply all the even integers, lower than or equal to k, all the way down to 2. It is more like a semi-factorial. For example, factorial of 8 means we multiply all integers from 1 to 8. In double factorial, we multiply all even integers from 2 to 8. Similar logic applies for an odd number, that is, we multiply all odd integers from 1 to the integer, whose double factorial we have been asked to calculate. Let's verify that the formula produces the correct result for the second and fourth moment. Substituting k equal to 1, we get. And simplifying, we see that it does give the correct result. Now substituting 2 for k, we get. Double factorial of 3 is 3 times 1, so we get the same formula as above. Now we derive a recursive formula for the even moments of the Brownian motion. We know from the previous discussion that the odd moments are zero, so even moments are all we need to focus on. Recall that the even moment can be represented as expected value of Brownian to the power of 2 times k, where k is a positive integer. The expected value of a function of a random variable is simply the integral of the function times its probability, so we get where we use the density of normal with mean, zero, and variance, t, as the expression inside the integral, will give the same value, for b, below zero, and above zero, we can write it as two times, the integral from, zero to infinity. Taking the constant out of the integral, we get. Now, to simplify the integral, we transform the variables, specifically, we set the expression inside the exponential equal to a variable, say y. Taking differential of both sides. Simplifying. And rearranging, we see that differential of b can be expressed in terms of the differential of y, as follows. Where we substituted square root of 2 times y times t for b to eliminate b. The lower and upper integration limits remain the same. For completeness, let's derive the expression for b to the power 2 times k as well. Making these substitutions into the formula, which we copy for convenience, we get
Now, we will simplify this expression further. Let's reproduce this final expression. Collecting the terms containing 2, t, and y, we get. Simplifying, we get a much simpler expression. Now the integral is just the gamma function. Let's quickly recall the basic properties of the gamma function. The gamma function of k is defined as follows. It is essentially a generalization of the factorial to real numbers. Recall that the factorial is defined for integers. Gamma function extends it to non-integers and as such, gamma has similar properties as those of factorial. Also, the gamma of 1 over 2 is defined as the square root of pi. Now, our integral contains k minus 1 over 2 instead of k minus 1, so it has an extra 1 over 2. Notice, minus 1 over 2 exceed minus 1 by 1 over 2. So, we can write our expression in terms of the gamma function as follows. And substituting gamma function for square root of pi, we get gammas everywhere. Now, we can use this expression to derive a recursive formula. The next higher power is 2 times k plus 2 or we just need to increment k by 1. Substituting the gamma expression with k replaced by k plus 1, we get. Applying the gamma function property which says that the gamma of x plus 1 is x times gamma of x, we get. Rearranging, we get. Now the fractional term is the 2 times k moment, so we get the recursive formula which links the two consecutive even moments of the Brownian motion. Now, let's use this formula to derive the first few even moments. The starting value is easy to calculate. Substituting k equal to 0, we get. Simplifying, we get the second moment. Next, substituting 1 for k, we get. Simplifying, we get formula for the fourth moment. Substituting, 2 for k, we get. And simplifying, we get the sixth moment. And you can continue, for as long as you like, but we will stop here. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next when we explore more properties of the Brownian motion.